I'm Peanut Tillman, and this is the NFL Player Second Acts with an S podcast. My guy Roman Harper with me. What's up? Why are you smiling? Why are you laughing right now? Because you're just a funny guy. <laughs> it's, gonna, it's not going to show on tape, but you're just a funny guy. That's all I'm saying. All right. Anyways, all of our viewers, I appreciate you. We love you. It's nothing but love. But I'm going to have to bark at you a little bit. Give us five stars, okay? Five star rating. Leave a couple comments. Please, 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 please. Click that follow button. Share. And leave some comments. We like to respond at times. Wherever you pick up your yeah. podcast, whether it's Apple yeah. Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Peanut, who are the beautiful guests today? <sighs> Andrew Hawkins, Troy Jones, Chris Johnson. 2K, what do we call him? Uh, CJ2K? CJ2K. Hey, we got a good one for y'all right now. We're going to kick the first one off with Hawk and Troy Jones. Check it out. Just the first duo. We got two talented brothers, NFL legends, Troy Jones, Andrew Hawkins, they're in the gaming. They got a whole lot of stuff in, in, in the Hawkins gaming. Hawkins on TV now, too. He on TV and he be acting? A little bit of everything, he, man. He do a little everything? <laughs> a little everything. I mean, before, we, I mean, can we just put the shoes up? <laughs> can we put the shoes up? <laughs> Spice Adam. Can we please put the shoes up? Out, you but see I them things? Spice Adam. Like that. That's why <laughs> Spice Adam. <laughs> like. Got that leg up just like that. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Look, Hawk said he invented Chelsea boots, so I had to make sure I came right because it's a okay. trademark. So, you, you know, got to do what I can do. I can't and then y'all brothers ones. been busy. <laughs> so, the last time y'all were here, y'all had this, the, 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 ver the VR game, mm -hmm. and y'all had Lamar Jackson on there. Mm -hmm. After y'all left Super Bowl, I went out, I got the VR, I bought the game. I mm. appreciate I that. I damn near broke something <laughs> because when I was trying to throw, it took me a minute to figure out how to throw the football. Okay. You I threw, you threw yeah. the controller. I mean, I, I damn near threw myself <laughs> and the controller. Like, I got I got so into it, it's, it's real. I don't That's know. Dope, I, man. You laughing, but I, I am say, laughing. Because I'm imagining you. Oh, my mama. It was, yo, I was, I was sweating. Yeah. I'm over there dodging, trying to throw them things. I couldn't figure out how to. So, at first, I was just trying to, like, like with the weed, you just kind of do that, and it, like, you really got to throw it. Yep. Yeah. Like you, <laughs> I swear on my mama, you, you, you really have to try to throw that thing. I was overthrowing it. I was underthrowing it. And I was like, damn, this is a lot harder than I thought. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, shout out. First off, shout out to y'all. It's, it's legit. It's, it's a, we appreciate that, man. That's USDA not. certified, put a stamp on it. I love it. So that's, that. that's, that's what real. We need. That is like, it's real. Put a stamp. Hey, it's put a stamp on it. It's real. It's certified. You heard it yeah. here, man. Anytime players yeah. put it on and that's their response, that what better marketing is that? Yeah. Because who knows what that experience is like better than, than you guys? Well, I'll take a cut of it if that's part nah, of the I mean, market. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, got I, a paperwork. I, I, I take a cut of it. I ain't telling you to say that, right? No invoices, bro. Right. Yeah, so, <laughs> but how much has so the other day uh, Lamar Jackson he wins the MVP it's mm -hmm. the second one yeah how has from last year to this year how has that been going with sales I know you guys been busy mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you, you you've raised a ton of money mm -hmm. like let, talk about that yeah so I mean to answer your first question things are going good with sales we was able to cross a million users in, mm -hmm. in less than fifteen months which is tough. And any consumer product, any game and market. So shout out to our team for that. Absolutely. And as far as Lamar, obviously, yeah, he's been on this ride all the way through. And we 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 started out with a vision, um, said each year it was going to get better. You know, operating like athletes, taking that mindset, applying it to the product, mm -hmm. and it's been it's been well received, man. I mean, people are having fun. Um, I would say the most exciting thing for us is we just getting started. You know, like yep. anything, we were the first people to ever launch a first uh, fully licensed sports game in VR. Mm -hmm. So now that we got user data, now that we got people in the headset giving feedback. Um, it's, it, you could take it up a notch because you got that data. You know what to go back and improve, yeah. and we're focusing on applying that. I, I mean, would go, go ahead. ahead. I was gonna say the cool thing for us is that people have been along the ride and the journey with us. You know, I mean, we knew that we had a perspective that people wanted to see. The tough part was obviously bringing it to life and communicating it in a way where people understood what the proposition was. To your point, we just raised our Series A round, which is led by Google. And our quest is to be the go-to place to build first-person sports. There is a level of access that fans have never had, which is on the field, that we felt like as athletes we could provide. And the biggest tech companies in the world have backed us and aligned with us to bring that to life. And that, you guys know that's, that's no easy feat. And we've done it by being ourselves. We've done it by hiring a diverse team. We've done it by hiring former athletes who – you know, might also be engineers, might also be incredible marketers, might also be producers, um, along with the expertise of people who have built sports games 
for a very long time. And that has allowed us to accelerate to get to the point that we are so quickly. I wish I was a STEM student. I, I, I could be talking to y'all. I could be coding. <laughs> peanut, 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 stay in your lane. FBI peanut, agent. Peanut, I, I, wish I, was a, like, I wish I was a STEM. Lane. I could be, I could, can y'all code? Lane. Can you, can you write code? Lane. No, we, we can cannot write code. code. So, you can't you know, write code. No, stay in your lane. <laughs> you know you don't be want to be in no I'm steam. I'm trying. <laughs> so th- my question is this. All right, number one, when you talk about the biggest money backers in, in these spaces backing you guys, mm-hmm. number one, I want you guys both to tell me, how does that make you feel to know that you're yeah. the ones that people believe in? Because it's something to be said yeah. when people are like, man, I'm with you, dog. But when they put their money behind you, that's a different level of belief. And then also... What's next? I know we're talking about the gameplay, the other things, but it's always on the next evolution because you got to stay in front of it because it's not the one in front of you that you ever worry about. It's the one behind you that's yeah, going to pass facts, you up 100%. that you have to look out for. Okay. I would say for people to back us the way that they have, I mean, it's incredibly humbling. I know that's cliche, but we probably need to do a better a job of like soaking in those moments like that because sometimes we take it for granted, not because we don't appreciate it, but because when you hear... 300 no's yeah. from people who aren't Google, right? Right. right? That does have an effect on you. <laughs> For right? sure. And so right. it's like, you have to do so much to show and prove. We've had to show them better than we could tell anybody. Yeah. And I think the thing that makes us special or the thing that we're most proud of, and I'll let Troy answer this question as well, but it's like, we've done what we said we were going to do. And as athletes, you don't get to the level you guys got to you don't get to what we're doing unless you have that conviction conviction you have that obsession and your focus is not the the press releases your focus is not how people talk about you your focus is not making sure when you come into a room people want to bow down and kiss the ring your focus is i said i'm going to do something that's all i care about is, is making sure that i do it and over time the right people will see that and go along with the journey. And I think that's what's happened for us. Yeah, 100%. I mean, basically to add on to what he said, we're not taking that face value, right? So when right. we go out and we're talking about what we're going to do or what we've done, it's some skepticism to it, just being being honest. So mm-hmm. like athletes, we we kind of go into these rooms with chips on our shoulder. And when you're the people that believe in us, we internalize that. Meaning like we want to prove you right. You know, we think yep. about our story, you know, my journey as a quarterback, Hawks journey. Uh, throughout his playing career, mm-hmm. underdogs who had to always work hard mm-hmm. and odds were against us. And it's kind of similar to that. And as we think about what we're building in our venture and the people who believe in us, their, their family, they yeah. believe in the vision. They, they trust us. Our team, same thing. Anyone who comes on this journey with us that um, that has joined the company, we we make sure that we do our, we do right by them by making sure right. we're, we're keeping what's top of mind for the what's best for the company top of mind. Right. Like we're mm-hmm. never making it about Troy and Hawk, you know, so when we talk about things, um, it's always like, all right, what's best for the company? What's going to make sure that everybody that's a part of this thing wins? Right. And I think that's just a byproduct of of just being appreciative. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Of of them believing in us. And yeah, to this point, we got to do a better job relishing in it. Like yeah. it's yeah. not an easy. Like it is a one percent of found, uh, founders that raise money are, are African American, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. for us to be in that, you gotta you gotta give yourself flowers for that. You gotta tell that story. Yeah. But the other side of it is like we got work to do, and we know that if we win, everybody wins behind us versus. Yeah. You know, just being happy like with that and being happy to be yeah. there type mm-hmm. type mindset, you know. So on on behalf of like myself and Rome, I wanna uh take out a little bit of cash <laughs> <laughs> right now. I got twenty four dollars. Listen, man. And I wanna I wanna back y'all. That'll like, get you point <laughs> oh 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 this is between this hey this from Rome and I. Oh, oh, yeah, this, oh. Hey, this from both of us. You gotta do it like Smokey did, you know, twenty, twenty two. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's right. right. <laughs> hey, that's from that's yeah. from both of us. A Black Bruce Wayne investment in a tech company right. yeah. series A. Hey, that's that's insane. Insane. I'm all, that's like Half a code, <laughs> half a character. <laughs> We're gonna spend fifty dollars in the Uber just trying to get to the bank <laughs> to put that money into the account. You say oh. less than one percent, man. I'm trying to be you, a part of that. Hey, you know listen, what I'm saying? Man, I'm yeah, trying to start. take us to one point one. You know it. what I'm saying? I hey, I'm a STEM it. student. I'm in the army. So oh, uh, I got a question for you, Hawk. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I I I know you're in the TV. Talk about some of the TV, some of the TV shows, movies, uh, some of the some yeah. of the. Uh, the projects that you're working on or have been in. Yeah. So, I I mean, entertainment is obviously a big part of, uh, of, of the pie chart that I've gotten into after, 
after football. And I think that's where status pro and pro era play into and where I've gotten a lot of that knowledge of saying, okay, this is what I think fans will gravitate to because I feel that reception in all the things that I've done. So I, I'm at ESPN now as an NFL analyst. Obviously, I produced, was an executive producer of Hair Love, which won an Oscar. Um, another executive producer of To Live and Die and Live, which was a dope movie that premiered at Sundance last year. Have a couple of projects in development, some comedy projects. Um, worked at Spring Hill Entertainment for a long time before I left there to, to go into status pro full time. And then they invested into the company. So I think what you're going to see from sports technology and specifically what we're doing at status pro there's a lane where these worlds will merge. Right. Um, and that's kind of what we've always envisioned of how do you enhance the sports experience of fans? And we had to find the thing that we're experts at and just drill down in there. We're not trying to be anybody else. We're not trying to take away from what anybody else has built from a gaming or an entertainment or how they, you know, show up with fans. But for us, if we can build an appetite for feeling, for seeing what it's like to be on the field, we will always be the leaders because that's something you only know if you've been there, that was our whole idea around the company. I, I love that. Um, I think the world is literally changing like right in front of us because, you know, we just seen the goggles, <laughs> the things you people are yeah. just walking around normal and stuff like this is normal. It's not it's not normal. <laughs> it's not normal. Yet. It's not normal yet. You know what I mean? So you guys are definitely ahead of the curve. But like yeah. you guys have seen this mm -hmm. and now the everybody else is starting to catch up. So I'm still in my mind like, OK. How do you guys continue to just grow? And yeah. like, what's the next game? Or what's the next, you know, or now we're going to be able to be a wide receiver where now you got people like Peanut running through the house. Like, right. so it's like, <laughs> yeah. what is going to be that next little part? I'm really excited to see what you guys do because this was just last year that we got introduced to this. Right. Yep. And in one year, it's like you said, months. 16 months. Yeah. Or you 16. guys have a... Uh, um, I'm over a million. Yeah, over a million. 1.1 million, million, million users. users. Yeah. And like you guys are learning so much more from them. So I'm really excited. I and support I want you guys. He didn't. To tell right, me. Dude, I don't have anything virtual. I don't like. <laughs> and you didn't hand me that $24, too. Don't think right. I already know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I ain't never. <laughs> you didn't even attempt it. That, that's true. <laughs> to I, tried to, I tried to make it double. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I want to know, like, what, what's next? And so, yeah. like, where do you guys see this going for mm -hmm. you guys? Yeah, to your point, in you that, know, in that lane. We've been in this space since 2016, 2017. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're obsession, obsessing over something like you think about, you know, and because we believed in it, we're thinking mm -hmm. about five, 10, 15 years ahead. So obviously we'll continue to, to scale the NFL product. We'll be able to make it more social where people can experience the game with their friends. So what does it look like for you to build virtual teams, for you to hang out in stadiums and, and just have unique experiences, become a platform in that way to where you can experience football in a number of ways in the NFL product. But mm -hmm. we want to go across different sports too. Um, so any and everything that's first person sports, we want to own. So that's basketball, that's baseball, that's boxing, that's soccer, right? The goal mm -hmm. is to really leverage what we've done in the NFL and continue to carry this out through through multiple sports, um, which yeah. is awesome. People believe in the vision. Obviously, technology's finally getting to the point where everybody's yeah. paying attention and um, we're gonna keep keep pushing forward. It's cool because when Troy and I first met, which was like, I think the end of 2016 or early 2017, we spoke in terms of what was coming in 10 years. And we were like, yo, in 10 years, these big clunky headsets will be smaller. There won't, they'll be wireless. There was no wireless headset at the time. <laughs> and our whole mindset was preparing for what the next 10 years was gonna look like. It's crazy. And that was seven years ago it now, wild. and it, it doesn't feel like it's it was wild. that long, but yeah. to your point of people walking around in VR <laughs> goggles, yeah. and imagine where it's going to be three four years from now. And so yeah. just like an athlete, when you get to the league or you've worked your hardest to become who you are, you don't so much focus on of like, oh, what's next? You just get better every day. Yeah. Yeah. You watch your film from the practice before, and you're like, man, I got to get that foot. Yeah, I got to straighten that out because I'm losing a step. I got to make sure I get my hands on this receiver sooner. And it's like you just start to enhance because now you put yourself so far in front. And if you keep getting better, you don't got to worry about who's behind yeah, you. That's true. Yeah. That's kind of how we approach the, yeah. the experience we have. Like, we're just going to keep making it better. We want more positions. Yeah. We want more mm -hmm. competitive nature. We want you to play linebacker. We want you to play receiver. We want you to play running back. We want you to play basketball, baseball. And we want to be the place when you think of first person sports, status pro is it. This is yeah. the, the gaming software that allowed us to see field level sports that we love across the gamut. I want to give you some love, too, because I can't wait to see the first YouTube video of somebody playing linebacker on 
on you guys' thing and they dive through a wall. Hey, <laughs> it's, it's, just like, it's coming, They just man. totally don't recognize that you should not be diving like that. No. Because <laughs> I see it in boxing. People doing boxing and somebody get hit yeah. all the time. Yeah. You know what's funny? We see so many viral videos of like uncles running through closet walls <laughs> yeah. and you know, we got to act like we don't even see it. Right. Like, oh yeah, right. you see that video with six million? Nah, I ain't see that. <laughs> you hear our game in the background. Right. Right. And investors like, like, I don't this know your what, game? Uh, yeah, you can't prove it. I don't know. what you're talking about. It's Mario Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> well, fellas, hey, man, we appreciate y'all. I'm actually curious to see what happens next year when y'all come on the show. I feel like this show is the good luck charm. Yeah, hey. this is it. We this is back, it. Man. I can't wait to see uh, you guys come back next year. You guys will be doing even bigger and better things. I think that in the boot game. Hey, listen, I got to come right next year. Yeah, I got to come right. You got to crush it next year. Right? Peter Pan didn't even have joints like that. Them things is fire. That's what we say. Them things is fire. Them things is fire. That's what we say. Them things is fire. Well, look, this is Peanut Tillman. We got Troy. We got Hawk. We got the black Bruce Wayne. We got my guy, Rome. Check us out. Info Player, Second Acts Podcast. Apple Pod Podcast, iHeartRadio, give us a link, five stars. Tell a friend and tell her what to tell her what. Tell a friend. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey, Super Bowl 58, we out. Let's go, Peanut. Yes. <laughs> Let's go. First of all, those dudes are killing the game. It was funny because we saw them last year. Last year. And they were still just kind of getting their feet a little bit, a little bit more wet, really diving into it. Peanut went out and bought some stuff. I did. <laughs> Damn near killed myself trying to play the, that game. It's dope, though. It's super nice. Damn near killed myself. But they really are heading and well on their ways to being the virtual reality of sports. I'm just a little disappointed that they didn't take my investment. <laughs> You, you, you <laughs> gotta make I'm, it I'm, enough. It's man, all good. Twenty four well, from both of us from the collection plate. The, 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 our next guest, trust me, hell of a ball player. I mean, they had the fastest forty time in combine history for a long time. Uh, CJ two K. Um, CJ two K, aka Chris Johnson. Our next guest is a good one. He's gonna remember this. Let me read a little bit of his resume because it is <laughs> extremely impressive. <laughs> Drafted 24th overall first round draft pick to the Tennessee Titans back in 2008. Played 10 NFL seasons. Uh, 2009 Offensive Player of the Year. Rushed for over 2,000 yards. Yes, sir. Uh, and he set the NFL record for the most scrimmage yards. Over 2,500. Since retiring, he's invested in real estate and he has a chain of successful coffee shops called Just Love Coffee. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast, Chris Johnson. CJ2K. CJ2K. Thanks for having me, CJ2K. Man. That's the name right there. <laughs> that is. 2000. I don't even drive that far, bro. You ran that. <laughs> yeah. I, don't even, I don't even drive that far, man. You know, I, I want to know this before we jump into it, because... I remember when you ran the 40, right? Uh -huh. That's Ooh. what put, put you on the map. Yeah. Nobody, right. if you didn't watch Eastern Carolina football, we didn't know who Chris Johnson was. Right, right. And I don't think the NFL knew either. And you ran this 40 at the combine. Could you talk about that moment and all of a sudden how it changed everything? Ah, uh, man, it was crazy because like going into the combine, like I was probably like a second, third rounder, you know what I'm saying? Because uh -huh. I had all the film to match and stuff like that. A lot of people didn't know about me, but yeah. before then, we did the junior day. So on jun junior day, when the I think at East Carolina, I probably like, probably like three scouts came out or whatever, three <laughs> yeah. scouts. But I ran, like my college. Yeah, but I ran a 419 there. Oh, wow, you know okay. I ran a 419, <laughs> so that's what kind of got it buzzing, you know what I'm saying? It still wasn't overly known, buzzing or whatever like that, and then... So I did my thing my senior year, and then in the um, bowl game, the Hawaii Bowl, I had 400 all-purpose yards. And then so I was on the cusp second, third round, and then like, man, at the, at the combine after I ran that 40, <laughs> it just went, everything went through the roof. It went it crazy. Yeah, it went crazy. So after that, I had like, I had 16 scheduled visits after after the combine. Like, it was crazy. That was, yeah, yeah. So, uh <laughs> Do you remember, remember, do you remember that? Uh, mm -hmm. that that 2012 game when Chicago came to Tennessee? Refresh now you, you, me. you now you had <laughs> <laughs> refresh my memory. So refresh you me. you you had a good one. So uh, I believe uh, where the score we won 51 to 20. 
That's you why you, you, that's nine. when you said that record that game. <laughs> yes, he did. He said that record. <laughs> yes, I said, he what did. it was? Four or five? <laughs> it was four. <laughs> yeah. It was four. That, was, yeah. Hey, that was a fun game. That was a fun yeah. game. I, I just at some point on the sidelines, y'all gotta be like, can y'all just not let this guy punch I the ball? I wanna out know again? what the conversation was on the sidelines. Yeah, that's the conversation was like, man, hold on to the de- uh, to the damn <laughs> ball. So what was it like for the during the week of practice? Did anyone say after, anything? After after you said that next week coming No, after no, the no. Game? I'm talking about the week leading up to us. Did anyone talk about it? Yeah. It was all talked about it because it was always known. They, the, you know, the the peanut punch and you know what I'm saying. Like you gonna get that ball or whatever like that was talked about. So extra ball security this week, all that stuff, and it was like. So the first play from scrimmage, we get Ken, uh, Kenny Britt mm, forced fumble. What mm. was the conversation on the sideline right after that one? It was just crazy. Like we talked about this, and you caught the first play and this happened. So it's like. <laughs> We already fighting an uphill battle. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then, like, me, myself, I never, like, I never fumbled. Like, I didn't. So, we come out there, then I fumble. And it's like, <laughs> dang. You know, and one of those fumbles was questionable. On that, I had a catch. So, it was a, like a bang, bang play. It yeah. really supposed to be a thing of ass. But I feel like they knew he was going for the record. And that was, so they gave it to him. But, yeah, man, he had a real good game, man. But you had, a, you had a good one, too, though. You ran, you still rushed for like 141 yards yeah, off yeah. of 16 carries. Like, yeah. you still did your thing. He had an 80-yard run, just took it to the house. I ain't even try to chase him. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, just yeah. let it go. I, yeah, don't I even put that on it. tape, dog. Don't yeah, even put yeah, that yeah. on tape. Just yeah. let him get that. Yeah, I want to know this. Uh, what was your... You know, you won the Offensive Player of the Year in 2009. Right. Do you have a signature play, a signature moment of that season or something that really just sticks out to you in that that, that season? Because I know you broke off a ton of long runs. but um, I think my signature, it, I ain't going to say it's just one play, but it was a game um, against Jacksonville. Me and Jones Drew, we was like going back and forth yeah, that yeah, whole Yeah, I game. remember that game. I think total rushing yards between me and him, it was like almost 500 yards, <laughs> like, but we was going back and forth. Like, he'll break a long one. i break a long one. It was just like going back and forth the whole game. Chris Johnson. With a C. Chris Johnson. C. You're in. First down at the 21. And Maurice Jones, Jew, breaking tackles again. Look at this kid. Unbelievable. He needs one block. Go right in front. Go right block it. Maurice Jones drew touchdown Jacksonville. What a play. First down and 10. Johnson gets a shot. It's rare. Watch out. He's got getting away from the top speed. Touchdown. Like in my head, and going back thinking about it, it was like a boxing match where, like, you know, he hit you with a big blow. I come back here, hit you with a big blow, and then I end up with the last big blow to knock him out. We end up winning the game, and I end up finishing with more yards and stuff like that. So that's a signature game for me. How, com- how how competitive do you get it when you're not making any tackles, but right. you you got another really good running back on the opposite sideline? Do you take it personal? Like, I got to outshine him. Yeah, I definitely say that personal. Like, that's something I used to always have in my mind. Like, I got to outshine the other guy. And then another thing, like, with me was, like, me, even though AP came in a year before me and I was asking, we were still the same. We graduated high school together. He came out early. But it was, like, always, like, you know what I'm saying? I got to outdo AP. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Because yeah. while we was in the league, that was always a talk. Who was yeah. the best back out of me and AP? So if he played earlier than I played, <laughs> what AP did today? You uh, know what I'm saying? <laughs> or a lot of times, I know in, I, in, in a lot of stadiums, they usually put yeah, the, the yards up, the highlights, yeah, the highlights yeah. and the yards up and like, God dang, AP just broke for 70. <laughs> I got to go for 80 today. I got to do some. So it's like, yeah, you just always want to compete in – compete against the other running back on the other team too and outdo him. Mm. So Adrian Peterson, one of the greatest, another uh, mm. a great running back to uh, to to play the game uh yourself. Is there a running back today who you think can rush for two thousand yards? With what you see, with, with the pedigree well, I see where, how with the, the pedigree of running backs we have. Yes. Well, first of all, the way that the offense is going in the NFL today, I don't think it can happen. Yep. Um, the last guy to do it, Darren Henry, they were still running the old school offense where they're going to give him the ball 20, 25 times yeah. a game. 
But how it's changing now is different. But if it's a guy that's capable of it, I would say um, I would say Jamar Gibbs. If they if they if they give him the ball how they should give him the ball, I think he can do it. I think Saquon could do it, but I, they'll never give him the ball like that. Saquon can do it. Jamar can do it. And if Nick Chubb can stay healthy, yeah, yes. I really believe he can do I it. I would like say Nick the Chubb. same thing about Saquon, too, because Saquon, yeah. it's always some little tweak or something. He's yeah. just trying to stay healthy. But when he is healthy, he's explosive, like you're saying. Um, I, I would like to know this. Um, I want your opinion. As a running back that was drafted in the first round, because now they act like you shouldn't draft a running back in the first round. Right. How the, the outlook on running backs – Going forward, how has it changed? What do you see the future in it? And also the devaluing right. of the running back or the star running back. Well, now it's running back by committee. See, I hate a lot of times like when they, they say, oh, you can get this guy in the third, <laughs> fourth, fifth round. How? I never seen you get a, a Chris Johnson, an Adrian Peterson, like a, a Barry Sanders, a Jarmar Gibbs. Mm. You, don't, you, you don't see these guys lasting to the fourth fifth round and things like that. Now, you might catch a guy in the third, fourth round, fifth round, they come in and, you know, they have a good career. Yeah. But what guy is you going to really name that can be like, oh, I did what AP did. I did what CJ did. That, oh, yeah, I went and got him in the fifth round or the fourth round. And a lot of times, some of those guys um, that they may catch, they don't tell the backstory behind it. That, that guy probably could have got hurt coming out of college or yeah. had character issues coming out of college. It's a reason why he went that late. It's a reason why yeah. he went that late. It wasn't just like, oh, this guy not talented enough to be a first rounder. We can wait and get him in the fourth round and he go crazy. No, they don't tell the backstory behind it. So that's why I don't like when they say that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and it's just like this year, you look at you, Jameer Gills, he was a first rounder. B. John Robinson, he was a first rounder. Like, I don't see how running backs can't go in the first round no more when you see the talent that's coming out. And it's crazy because everybody was like questioning Jameer Gibbs, and then all of a sudden they saw him play. Right. Especially down the stretch when he right. figured it out. Mm -hmm. when he figured electric. It out. Yeah, electric. Good player. Yeah, definitely. So making that transition after you uh, after you retire, right. you go back to school, you get your degree in communications. Yeah. And congratulations. You, yeah, Thank congratulations. You. Thank you. Thank you. You get into you start investing in uh, coffee. Right. Just love coffee. Yeah. And talk about. How, well, first off, you gotta must you must really love coffee to invest in it. And I know y'all have what twenty you, you got 26. about twenty six locations. Yeah. Uh huh. You know yeah. how did you get invested in this? Like what 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 made you uh, want to do that? Well, the crazy thing is like when I first like when I first retired, right, going through that phase where it's like dang, like I'm used to being on a schedule every day yeah. of my life, nothing doing. It's like dang, like what I'm gonna do, like. <laughs> The transition is hard. So the yes, first thing, my first initial thing, what I did was I went back to school. Yeah. So uh, doing a lot of online classes and stuff like that. And then like going through that, a lot of time what I used to do, like used to be sometimes I'd be sitting in the house and I'm just like, like bored, like sit, I got to get out. <laughs> so I used to go to like different coffee shops and like study and do all that type of stuff. And just sitting there, I'm like, man, this kind of dope, man. <laughs> like, I, like, and I just see how many people come in and out, like, Sometimes you see some of the same people come in and out all yeah. day getting coffee. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, this this will probably be dope. You know what I'm saying? So then, so I'm like, man, I'm just just try it out. You know what I'm saying? And I got in there that type of way or whatever. So the, my first initial thing was I'm going to get a coffee shop. So it was a franchise or whatever like that. And then COVID hit or whatever like that. And I'm like, man, I know, like, I want to build this brand and things like that, like, what are some ways, like, what can I do, like, to become bigger, you uh, know what I'm saying, and not just hold myself to, like, this individual store. So I'm like, man, you know what, I'm going to just go to the owners of the company and stuff like that, see if I can invest and see if I can be part owner. So I went to from just owning one individual store to becoming part owner of the whole brand or whatever like that. And I just felt like it was a smart idea because next, like, if we talk about addiction and we're not talking about, like, Nothing illegal, not drugs or mm -hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? Like coffee is like people are addicted to coffee. They are. Yes, they are. <laughs> addicted to Gotta coffee. Have it. Like they have to have <laughs> it. And a lot of times people think, oh, the hot coffee in the morning where we grew up thinking, but no, people love iced coffee. And they drink that all throughout the day, all throughout the winter. Now, are you a coffee I mean, drinker? No, I'm not. <laughs> 
my grandmother's was. Okay. So when I when I used to come out like in middle school and high school, my grandma and them like mm-hmm. in like my aunties and uncles and stuff, like every weekend, like every Saturday, Sunday morning, everybody used to come to my grandmother's house because I grew up, I lived with my grandmother. Like everybody used to come there every Saturday morning. They used to be there like like eight in the morning, all sitting out on the porch, just drinking coffee, sitting around talking and stuff like that. So like that's my first initial introduction to coffee. Now you got a, a signature, you got a signature blend. Yeah, yeah, I got a signature like some, blend. some lemons, some raisins. Yeah, lemon and raisin blend. With, I never would have thought like lemons and raisins and, and tea. I never would have thought that would have went together. Like who yeah. came up, who and how did you come up with that? Man, it was crazy, like that blend. So at the main office, like it's a coffee tasting room. You know what I'm saying? Like you got all the like it's probably like 20, 30 different coffees. You can taste, you know what I'm saying? So just sitting there tasting all the different coffees and getting the blend, putting it together, and then whatever the best one that I like, you know what I'm saying? I just went with that. Okay. I just went with that. All right, tell me about, because it sounds like it just went great, but I want to know about like a pitfall, something you didn't see happening outside of COVID that you learned from this coffee business. Like, man, this is, everybody just needs to look out for this because this is what's really out there. Um, Well, that... That coffee business kind of got me into the next one as far as real estate. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I do real estate now. So Commercial the, or uh, residential? Uh, well, Airbnbs. Okay, yeah. Airbnbs. So um, just getting into the coffee business and running a restaurant and things like that, like dealing with employees. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, yeah, there it it's is. like you babysitting because <laughs> yeah. that type of business, coffee shop, you got... You got high school workers, basically. Yeah. You may have some freshmen, college workers, but you're dealing with kids. You know what I'm saying? So you're dealing with kids, and sometimes you're dealing with their parents and stuff <laughs> like that. So it's like going into that, that let me know that like I really don't want to do nothing involving <laughs> with having to deal with people, like having to deal with employees. I'd rather just deal with real estate. It's cut and dry. This is what it's going to be. You don't have to worry about, oh, this this person can't show up to work today all of that type of stuff is just a headache everybody complains about that the, the people part <laughs> right <laughs> it's like you gotta manage all them personalities I guess yeah. it's kinda like being a head coach it's 53 people on the team you got 53 personalities that you gotta manage right right so I got a question for you we all what, I got 11 or I'm sorry you got 11 I got 13 how many years 10, 10. Yeah. we all have that moment where we get rocked or something crazy happens that you didn't expect. Like, damn, this is the league. This is this is real. What was your welcome to the NFL moment? Um, mine was we was playing um, we was playing Cleveland Browns my rookie year, um, and they had Dequell Jackson. <laughs> and I was, was coming Mike, up. Mike linebacker. <laughs> yeah, Mike linebacker. And all he want to do is that that that. And it's so crazy that 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 you was with Chicago because I thought I was gonna have my coming um, welcome to the NFL moment when I was going against. Brian Erlacher. Yeah. But once I played against him, I feel like he more a finesse yeah. linebacker. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. But what Dequell Jackson, he want to third every chance he get. <laughs> every chance he get. So I come through the middle, he hit me. I go this way, my mouthpiece go the other way. <laughs> I'm like, dang, this real deal right here. <laughs> this real deal. Is that the hardest you ever been hit? Yeah. Dequell Jackson, shout out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got back up now. I'm gonna get back up. <laughs> was it was it like the program Darnell Jefferson where you just yeah? I'm, like, I'm you know I was more embarrassed because I'm like, hey, my he's not my mouthpiece side. <laughs> <laughs> like, now, my question is, I want to know what you think you would run a forty in right now. Right now, yes. Oh man, when when was the last time you ran? <laughs> Ran. I, 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 I mean, I, you look like you still work out, but like yeah, I'm talking yeah, about like running. Car, like run full, full speed. It's been a while. Like <laughs> yeah. I just do cardio. Like I jog around the neighborhood. I don't run. Like <laughs> no, nah, I don't do that. <laughs> Unless the dog come yeah. around that corner. Unless that dog come around. Like realistically, I think I, I can I can run a four four right now. You run a four four. Yeah, I can run a. If you hit four five, you probably like mad. I'm gonna run a four four. I know I can run a four four. <laughs> okay. T.O. said he ran a 4-4-2 or a 4-4 two years ago. Yeah. And T.O. 50. Yeah, if T.O. ran 50. that, I, yeah, if T.O. <laughs> ran that, I know I can run. So you beating that? You yeah. think, oh, okay. <laughs> it's, 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 no, no question. Hell it's yeah, only, I can beat like, that. If you think about it, like, it's 40 yards. 
I know. That, that I, might be your only one. I think one, I can win a full five right now. Right. I, not a full four. I think I could do a full five right now. Dude, I barely hit four four when I was in my best shape at 22, 23. What, what was your best 40? Uh, four, four, five. Oh, okay. Okay. Somewhere around there. What'd you, what'd you say you ran? We don't have to talk about it. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's just focus on Chris here. Okay. <laughs> let's just focus on Chris here. I, you know, fast people like to run fast. So let's just focus on Chris here. I'm good with that. You cool with that? Yeah, that I'm cool. Yeah. All right, cool. Go ahead. So uh, you got a podcast mm. with one of your former teammates. Right. Lindell White. Mm. How's that been going? And what is like, how, how, what do you guys talk about on your podcast? Right. Well, we talk about just life, everything that's going yeah. on in life, all social um, problems and all that stuff. I um, mean, honestly, we kind of, we took a break right now because we was doing a lot of Zoom, like yeah. over Zoom and stuff like that. And like, that kind of got boring to me. I like more in person. Sitting this is here, way like, better. Know what I'm saying? It's yes. way better. Know what I'm saying? You have more fun with it. You look more forward to it and stuff like that. So we are, right now we just rebranding and like just trying to figure out because he lives in Denver. I live in Orlando. So we're just trying to figure out a schedule where we can get together and like just make content and release it and make it make sense. That's kind of how ours started out. We did the whole Zoom yeah. at first and then... Mm. Did did an event uh, for the league? It was totally different, totally different vibe. And, right. and once then the, the energy, league was like, it was like, yeah, oh yeah, we got it. Yeah, we're never going back to Zoom again. So how do you, like, are y'all close? Like y'all stay in the same? No, area? no, no. I'm in Chicago. Mm -hmm. He lives in uh, Charlotte. So, right. so how y'all work that out? We just, I don't know. We we just make it work. Yeah, we yeah. We just Thomas. Meet. He's a, he's our he's our guru. Shout right, out to right. Thomas. Shout out to Thomas. Yeah, he's How he's, in, he's in La La Land right yeah. now because he just he saw a little star crush. He saw his he, high school crush. He been acting right since. <laughs> I mean, he, he just been yeah, acting right, right. since. He 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 <laughs> told just he completely changed. <laughs> he made his lead a stage. He was blushing. He was blushing up <laughs> over here. Brought yeah. out a little mini vacuum. He, he turned was, red. He was doing the yeah. most. So it's all good. But CJ, I want to know this from you because we asked this to all of our guests and. Mount Rushmore of influence, like the mm -hmm. people that have impacted you the most in your life. In my life. Football, off the field, on the field, life in general. You get four. Who I would those four be? Okay. Um, one, I would say my, my what? Two, one of them, I would say my, my great grandmother. Okay. That's my great grandma. Like, lived with them my whole time growing up. So, like, I came up, like, my mom and dad, they was, I was with them too. Like, I ain't gonna yeah. say they weren't involved else in my life, but like, I always wanted to live with my grandmother. So it was crazy <laughs> because I stayed with two of my grandmothers. So I stayed with my great grandmother and my, and my grandmother. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I grew up with them. So like, just seeing how hard they work, how they hustle and stuff and like to always provide and stuff like that. Those are, those are two. Um, and I gotta say my oldest brother, like, I always wanted to be like my oldest brother because when I was younger, my mom wouldn't let me play football because she thought that I was going to get hurt Kyle Little, but she always let my brother play. So like every year- oh, like, so she let him play, but you couldn't play. Yeah, but I can't How play. old was he? He's my oldest. He was my oldest brother. So he's five years older than okay. me. Okay. So he's my oldest brother. So I got three older brothers. He's the oldest. So every year, like all the way up until like seventh grade, every year, like he used to be like just working out, training, stuff like that. I used to be right there with him, working out and training and stuff like that. And when it comes time for the football season, she let him play and would never let me play. So I do all this work for no reason. <laughs> so finally, she eventually let me play. But like just seeing, like, he's the reason why I played football, mm, like why yeah. I always wanted to play football and stuff like that. So, like, um, he's one. And then another guy, um, I got to say Vince Young, man. Like, okay. Okay, yeah. Vince Young was a guy like when I came to when I came to the league, he was a quarterback. A guy that took me on his wings and just just to see the type of person he is and like no matter like whatever was going on with him and like when everything was going on with him, like he never changed or anything like that. Like he he took it on the chin and like and still like to this day like that's my brother man and he's still doing great for himself and. Like, even though he didn't, like, we knew how good Vince was. And even though he didn't have this long career or play like that, like, he got no ill wills or anything. Like, you wouldn't even know. You would think he played 15 years in the league. Oh, wow, yeah. Like, when you get around him, like, he's just still chill. He the same guy. He act the same right now, the same guy that I met the first day I walked in the locker room to how he is now today. So, 
That's awesome. I love the consistency yeah. with that. I wouldn't have guessed Vince Young. I, wouldn't I, I did not see that yeah. on that Mount Rushmore. So thanks, yeah. man. CJ2K. Yes, sir. Hey, man, we appreciate you coming on the show, man, man, blessing us with some Thank stories. Thank you for having me, bro. And hopefully awesome. they zoom in on all this ice my man got. Because, you know, <laughs> if you don't know who it is. I'm cold. I mean, clearly. <laughs> I, I, got you know. I got goosebumps. I'm yeah. cold. Okay, good. <laughs> it's cold. We appreciate you, boss. Thanks, yes, man. Sir. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it, man. Love what he's doing with Just Love Coffee. Uh, Chris Johnson, he's killing it with the franchise business, man. I, I, I love what he's doing. The business mind, the real estate, like he's just, man, I'm, I'm proud of him. He's, he's doing amazing things. I'm, I'm just happy that he said he can still run like a 4-4 four, four and when challenged, I'm like, dude, this dude probably hit a 4-3. Yeah. And that's just scary. I can, I'm going to say I'm going to do it like a high 4-5 right now. You right now? Right now. High 4-5, yeah, like I'm, a 4-5-9. I'm going to do a pulled hamstring. So we are good to go. Hey, all of our viewers, wherever you pick us up at, <laughs> wherever you watch us or listen to us, give us a five-star rating. Give us a follow. Click that subscribe button. Leave a couple comments. Please share. Uh, whether it's either on Apple Podcasts iHeartRadio. Man, Peanut, this is another great one, bro. All we doing is dropping bangers, dog. All we do is win, 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 no matter what. I think I made that up. Y'all ain't never heard that before. I'm pretty sure you do. You know I'm out. Nope, that's me. All I do is win, win, win. I'm Peanut, NFL Player Second Acts Podcast. He left because he mad, but I did make that lyric up. He stole it from me. That's all I'm saying. I'm Peanut Tillman. I'm out.